Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 41 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 40, I introduced the concept of buffer solutions to you. In this video, we are going to move on with the concept of buffer. But let me just recapitulate what I told you in the previous video. I told you a buffer solution is a solution which resists the change in pH even if you add a little acid or a little base even concentrated a few drops of concentrated acid or concentrated base to it the pH of a buffer solution does not change even on addition of acid or base. Then I told you that buffer solutions are of two types or rather they are actually of three types the two main types are the acidic buffer and the basic buffer. The acidic buffer is formed when you have a weak acid and it's salt with a strong base and a basic buffer is formed by a weak base and it's salt with a strong acid. Such mixtures of the acid and its salt or the base and its salt acts as a buffer. Also, a third category of buffers is there where you have a salt which is made up of a weak acid and a weak base. Such a salt also acts as a buffer. Also, I told you in addition to this about buffer capacity that on adding how much of uh, a strong concentrated acid or a base does the pH of that buffer one liter of the buffer change by one value how much of acid should you add in order to change the pH or decrease the pH by one value and how much of base should you add to increase the pH by one value of the pH scale that is known as the buffer capacity and then I told you that we use Henderson's equation to calculate the pH of an acid buffer or a basic buffer. So the Henderson equation is used to calculate the acidic and the basic buffers. And then I gave you the three forms, the three, the first was the acidic buffer, the equation for calculation of pH. And for basic buffer, we you first calculate pOH and from that you calculate the pH by putting it in the formula of Kw, the pKw minus pOH will give you pH. So we use the Henderson equation to calculate the pH of the buffer solution. Let us now understand buffers better and move on with our understanding of this. Why does a buffer actually act as a buffer? It does not, it is hindering, it is stopping the change in pH. And when does the pH change? The pH of a solution changes when the concentration of the hydrogen ion changes. And the concentration of the hydrogen ion can change either by adding an acid which supplies the H positive ions or by adding a base which supplies OH negative ions to the solution. But since the ionic product of water remains constant, it results in the change in the concentration of H positive ions also, thereby resulting in the change of the pH. So let us understand what is it that is causing these uh, solutions to act as buffers. So let us go back to the definition. An acidic buffer is one which is formed by mixing a weak acid with its salt with a strong base. So the weak acid is acetic acid and the salt is sodium acetate. When you mix these two and especially the buffer capacity is maximum when you have 50% of both that is the concentrations of both the weak acid and the salt is equal at that time the buffer capacity is said to be the highest but in other ratios also if you add to it the solution does act as a buffer only its capacity may not be optimum what happens when you put a weak acid in water like acetic acid it dissociates partially because it's a weak acid into acetate ion and H positive or H3O positive ion. And the salt, the salt is formed with sodium hydroxide. When you have acetic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide, it results in the formation of the salt, sodium acetate. So sodium acetate is a salt of a weak acid with a strong base that is sodium hydroxide. But when you add this salt to water to the same mixture, this also dissociates being an ionic compound. It also breaks down into acetate ion and sodium ion. And as I told you in the previous uh, videos, that sodium ion is a strong cation. So it remains in the solution. It remains hydrated. But the acetate ion 
which is present is weak so it has a tendency not to stay there and it causes hydrolysis one point is that you have to keep in mind that this is weak but right here in for the buffer action it is not that which is important what is important is that by adding the salt of the same acid you are adding acetate ion to the solution and we had studied common ion effect so we have added a salt which has a common ion with the acid and what happens as a result of addition of a common ion the common you have disturbed the equilibrium of the primary reaction and by disturbing the equilibrium of the primary reaction by adding a common ion in the products the reaction will proceed in that direction which nullifies the effect of the addition of that ion which means which uses up this ion so that it becomes the concentration decreases and that happens if the reaction proceeds in the backward direction how is this important in the first step this was the step which was responsible for providing acidic character or giving ph to the solution because this was providing the h positive ions and this reaction has caused the formation of h positive rather the formed h positive ions to go back and form the acid because the reverse reaction starts so it decreases the concentration of h positive thereby providing a hindrance in the increase of h positive ions and therefore the decrease in the ph value because as hydrogen ion increase concentration increases the value of the ph decreases because value of ph is minus log of hydrogen ion concentration since it is a negative law therefore the value would and since the concentrations are usually 10 to the power minus 14 minus 10 therefore the value of minus log of that 10 to the power minus something would be a positive value so if you see as the hydrogen ion concentration uh, decreases therefore the acidic character of the ph of the solution increases so it is stopping the uh, ph to change by not allowing the h positive ions as it is it was a weak acid on top of it the common ion is not allowing that acid to even that acid to dissociate thereby keeping the ph constant the same thing happens even with bases when you have ammonium hydroxide which is a weak base and you add ammonium chloride which is a salt of the same weak base with a strong acid hcl the common ion produced is ammonium which does not allow more OH negative to come into the solution and therefore it is hindering the change of pH so the addition of this salt itself is causing a hindrance in allowing the uh, in the change in pH and that is the reason why such solutions act as buffers they are stopping they are causing a hindrance they are not allowing the pH of the solution to change now if you we have understood that buffers are mixtures of acids and their salts or bases and their salts so what happens if you add water to a buffer solution we saw from the Henderson equation that you have the concentration of salt divided by the concentration of the acid or the base in the Henderson equation. So the value of pH of a buffer depends on the ratio of the concentrations of the salt and the acid or the salt and the base. It does not depend on the actual concentrations. It's a ratio. And since it is a ratio, even if you add more water, which is a neutral substance to it, the ratio remains the same and since the ratio remains the same when you add water to a buffer solution it does not affect the pH of that solution it does not affect addition of water or dilution does not affect the pH of the solution but it affects the buffer action and how does it affect the buffer action you as I told you that you have these this common ion and in a certain concentration it would be able to hinder the reaction but when dilution is a lot you add a lot of water the molecules are far apart it is not possible for them and you add a few drops of a strong acid or a strong base the molecules are so far that they cannot quickly come and and oppose the process therefore the pH of the solution would change when you add uh, an acid or a base to a diluted buffer or an excessively diluted buffer so we say 
what is the effect of dilution on the pH of a buffer? There is no change on dilution on the pH of the buffer, but buffering action of the buffer is affected by dilution. Now let us understand what this buffering action is. It is known as the buffer action. What reaction takes place that causes the buffer to act as a buffer? So we'll take the two examples, the acid buffer and the base buffer, and I'll explain it to you using these. And we are taking the same two examples here. The acid buffer is the mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate. So you have this mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate. What do you have in solution when you, uh, when you start with this? When you start with this reaction, what you have in solution is CH3COOH, CH3COO negative, H3O positive from here, any positive is not important because it is going to remain hydrated. But since it remained hydrated in the solution and the H positive would also cause the breaking of the water molecule because this is H3O positive, you get OH negative in the solution too. So the species present in the solution are CH3COOH, CH3COO negative. You have H3O positive and OH negative. These are the four significant species which are present in the uh, buffer solution already. And now when these species are present, you add, let us say, an acid to it. You add a few drops of hydrochloric acid to this. So on adding a few drops of hydrochloric acid, the hydronium ion from the strong acid now, HCl will give out H positive and it will result in the formation of H3O positive. So this and it would dissociate almost completely since it's a strong acid. So this H3O positive which is provided by the strong acid, it combines, it would combine with CH3COO negative and result in the formation of the weak acid that is CH3COOH would be formed. As a result of which, the H3O positive, the extra H3O positive which entered the solution, it reacted with that excessive CH3COO negative which was already present in the solution and resulted in the formation and the H3O positive got blocked by forming CH3COOH. So now there is no free H3O positive in the solution. And if there is no free H3O positive in the solution, there is no change in the hydrogen ion concentration or the hydronium ion concentration. And therefore the pH remains constant. If we had added a few drops of a strong base, then the same would have happened. The strong base would have dissociated completely and would have resulted in an excess of OH negative ions in the solution. And these OH negative ions, what would they have done? They would have reacted with the CH3COOH. And if they reacted with CH3COOH, they would remove the H positive from CH3COOH, make uh, or uh, form more CH3COO negative in the solution, but use the H positive and block the OH negative by forming water. Since water is formed, the OH negative which would have added to the solution, that gets used up. And since the OH negative, there is no increase in OH negative, therefore the concentration of H positive also does not change. And since that does not change, there is no change in the pH and that results in the buffer action. That causes the buffer action of the, uh, on adding a base. The same thing happens, the buffer action when you have a, when you have a basic buffer. If you have a basic buffer, for example, ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, on adding a few drops of the base, when you add a few drops of the base, you'll get OH negative ion. The OH negative ion combines with the NH positive, which is present in the solution in excess, and it gets blocked. Since the concentration of OH negative ion does not change, but since it is consumed, therefore the H positive ion concentration also does not change and the pH remains fixed. And at the same time, if you, add, if you had added a few drops of acid instead, then the hydronium ion from the acid would have combined with the OH negative ion which is already present in the solution and resulted in the formation of neutral water, thereby neutralizing it and therefore not affecting the the pH of the solution. So this was buffer action. Let us now see what are the applications of these buffers. The most important application that nature used naturally was 
that all fluids in our body, especially blood and other fluids that are present in our body, they have a fixed buffer. They are all buffer, sorry, and they have a fixed pH. And they have a fixed pH because the human body or the bodies of all organisms, they can function only under a certain pH range. And they, this, as much as a change, as much as 0.2 in pH, 0.2 value in pH can cause the death of an organism. It can cause the death of an organism if the pH of the blood changes as much as by just 0.2. So you can Im imagine how important maintaining the pH of the uh, body fluid in the body is. So the first application is that by nature itself, that the blood is a natural buffer. It has a pH range of 7.36 to 7.42 where it acts as a buffer. But if it goes up by 0.2 above, that is if it becomes 7.44 or it becomes 7.34, even that value is enough to kill a person. And this buffering action is due to what? The carbonic acid, which is a weak acid, and a bicarbonate of the weak acid. That is what causes the buffer action of a blood. The second application of buffers is, is in food preservation. Again, whatever we consume, you must have heard commonly that I ate too much of acid. These days there's a fad, you know, keep the body alkaline. Have as much alkaline food as you can because acidity actually creates a lot of problem. And therefore, when food is preserved, that is done in a manner to maintain its pH. You do not want to put anything inside the body which is going to cause a change in the, which is going to force a change in the, in the pH of the body fluids. Therefore, it is important to maintain the pH of all the foods that we eat. So food that is preserved, we try to maintain it at a certain pH. In agriculture, soil has a particular pH. And just as I told you that the blood should be of a certain pH, otherwise the organism would die. Plants also need the water that is running into its body and the salts that are traveling in it water also needs those fluids to be at a certain pH. So if the soil is too acidic or too basic, that would also result in the, uh, in the growth of certain crops that may be suitable only for that acidic condition. Sometimes when the acidic or the basic conditions are extreme, no plant grows in that area. That land is barren where the pH is an extreme. So even for agriculture, for a proper yield of your crop, you need the pH of the soil to be optimum for that particular crop. So it is important, the getting a soil of a proper yield, soil of a certain pH is important. Soil, how does it get buffered? It is possible to buffer soil, uh, soil with the help of carbonates, with the help of bicarbonates, with the help of phosphates and organic acids which are given to it. The choice of the fertilizer depends on the pH of the soil. Now, which fertilizer will you add? It will depend on whether you want to add a phosphate fertilizer. Does it have to be a carbonate? Does it have to be a bicarbonate? What kind of fertilizer would you add will depend on the pH of the soil because you do not want to add a fertilizer which would make the pH uh, inappropriate or uh, for the use by plants. Then comes the fourth application of buffers, that is in industry. In an in industry, the paper industry, dye, ink, paints, drugs, all these industries use buffer solutions. And the fifth and the most important application of buffer solutions is in analytical chemistry. In both quantitative and qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis is you, go, you, you all go to the lab to do the salt analysis in the lab. That is qualitative analysis. Quantitative analysis is uh, preparing solutions of certain concentration, uh, like you carry out your titrations and all, where you, you, you're doing quantitative work there. So qualitative analysis is where you identify, where you're finding out uh, the chemicals. In both of those in analytical chemistry, we use buffer solutions. One example is 
for group 3 and 4, for the qualitative analysis of group 3 and 4 cations, if you remember, the solution has to be buffered. Why? What do you add to it? You add ammonium hydroxide and ammonium fluoride. That is because you want to create a buffer to get your precipitates. So that is how it is used in the qualitative analysis and uh, in analytical chemistry it is also used in um, buffers are also used to remove the or to remove the interfering radicals for example phosphates in the case of phosphates we use buffers in order to remove the interfering radicals so this was all about buffers and with that i will finish this video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.